Good morning and welcome. Today we're going to be um, doing a webinar and it's uh, entitled How Splunk and AWS Enabled End-to-End -end Visibility for PagerDuty and Bolstered Their Security Posture. Um, that's a mouthful, but uh, I, I assure you it's a, a very interesting webinar and uh, we got a lot of great content um, for you. My name is David Potes and I'm a Manager of Solutions Architecture for Amazon Web Services. And uh, I'll be one of your hosts today, um, and I'll, I'll also be um, moderating um, the Q&A. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So today's presenter is me. Um, I already told you about me. Uh, we have Arup Chakrabarty. Um, he's Director of Engineering at PagerDuty. And Erin Sweeney will be here. Uh, she's a Senior Director of Security Product Marketing at Splunk. And we're going to talk about um, how they did it together. So today's agenda, you know, we're going to talk about um, uh, AWS and AWS Marketplace. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the security solutions and, and the why of security. We're going to talk about some of the challenges that PagerDuty faced and um, how they were able to achieve success with AWS and Splunk together. Um, and then we'll do an overview of some of the Splunk solutions that we're talking about today. Um, and then we'll hop into Q&A and discussion. So like I said, uh, uh, send us your questions. Uh, really excited to hear your feedback on this. And we've got a couple of learning objectives. So um, you know, what will you walk away with at the end of this um, webinar? Uh, how to be proactive in security uh, and, and really prevent breaches. Um, prevention is worth an ounce of cure. And uh, how Splunk makes that possible uh, using analytics uh, uh, to drive security. Um, so you can really get end-to-end -end visibility, um, whether you're fully in AWS or you know, you're partially there in a hybrid environment. Um, uh, either way, Splunk is there for you and um, really has a great solution. We're gonna talk a little bit about AWS security, um, and I promise it's not too foundational, um, but I, I do wanna throw some statistics at you uh, because you know breaches are not only painful, um, but they're also expensive, and you know, it is a uh, when firms um, uh, kind of grow their business, uh, they're actually exposing themselves to more risk as that goes out on because you know the you have more value at stake, you have more intellectual property, and more data, um, and you know the the consumers say that you know breaches make them nervous, and um, it's something that can cause you to lose. Uh, customer trust, um, as well as uh, actually experience, you know, theft of your property, um, and you know, it's it's rather costly. You know, an average of about six and a half million um, per data breach. So we definitely want to avoid that. And you know, I talk about this all the time. Being in the cloud um, can actually be more secure than your existing environment, um, and. There's an excellent report by IDC, a white paper, um, that really kind of talks about this, um, but uh, there's a couple of factors that make it easier to be secure in the cloud. Um, one is that uh, you get advanced automating and you're able to automate the logging and monitoring. So um, logging is built in, um, frankly, because we need to meter usage so that we can charge you for your usage. So. Um, everything is logged, and uh, it's really up to you to um, figure out how to uh, uh, analyze that and um, be able to uh, work on that. Um, resource access is easier, so it, it's very easy to set up roles in IAM and um, give your developers and users just the right access that they need. And we have a very strong encryption story. So it's easy to encrypt almost everything, whether that's at rest or in transit, and strong authentication. So cloud architectures are designed uh, essentially from the ground up to allow very fine-grained authentication and enforce authentication everywhere. A lot of times in older architectures, you'll, uh, you'll force people to authenticate initially um, but then that's kind of that, right? Um, but with a modern cloud architecture, you can enforce that authentication through all of your application services and administrative interfaces. So good stuff there. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite diagrams, and it really talks about how AWS and you share the responsibility for security. So this is what we call the shared responsibility model. 
And if you look here on the bottom, uh, and, and if, if your monitor is in color, you'll see it in blue. Um, AWS takes care of the security of the cloud. So when we talk about foundational services like compute, storage, networking, uh, the database that's at the heart of many applications, um, we're really doing the work to secure those and manage those, and we kind of take that off of your hands. Uh, we also manage the physical infrastructure, um, and that's everything from limiting access to physical buildings to providing multiple availability zones um, so that you can um, uh, have fault tolerance uh, if disaster should strike. Um, and then we roll those up into regions, and regions give you the ability to uh, not only uh, be fault tolerant, um, but follow the rules of your data sovereignty rules and um, really give you the ability to uh, control the security uh, based on what region you're in. Now for you, you have some work to do as well. The, you control the level of security um, through network security, data encryption, and manage your identity and access control. Um, and you know you may have very sensitive data that requires stringent controls. Uh, you may have less sensitive data that requires a, a little less stringency. And the great news is that you, as the customer, get to decide the levels based on your own business needs and your own data. And I skipped one of those boxes um, because I think uh, I really want to kind of dial into this and uh, underscore the importance of uh, inventorying your configuration. So, um, and this is where Splunk can be really helpful. Uh, understanding what you have on the cloud, how it's configured is critical to managing your own security. And Splunk that makes that easy um, and really gives you that end-to-end -end visibility of your inventory and your configurations and what's happening in your environment. So the, the AWS infrastructure is constantly monitored. Um, so we have a team of, uh, of uh, uh, security folks um, that are managing this, and we give you the tools to uh, help manage it yourself. So CloudTrail for monitoring API calls, uh, Inspector that can assess your application for vulnerabilities, and um, having that constant monitoring uh, can really give you peace of mind that we are helping you take care of your cloud infrastructure. It's highly available, so we have 43 availability zones in 16 regions. Um, so uh, essentially your data can be where your customers are, um, but also it allows you for geographic redundancy um, as well as you know, uh, control for compliance. Um, and with the new AWS Shield service, uh, you're able to protect yourself from um, a distributed denial of service attack. And what's cool is you can integrate it within your existing resources. So if you're an Active Directory shop, uh, AWS is easy to integrate with your existing Active Directory. Um, you can use Direct Connect for a dedicated connection, uh, a low latency connection to your data center. And you can manage your own encryption keys uh, if that's what you choose, or you can let us manage them for you. And any security discussion, um, would, uh, would we'd be remiss to talk about all of the certification and assurance programs um, that we've been certified by, everything from the CSA to FedRAMP to FIPS, um, ITAR, um, GovUK, Trustit, uh, and the list goes on and on. You can actually check our website. There's far more than this, but these are some of my favorites. So next I'm going to uh, hand off to Arup, um, and he's going to talk about how PagerDuty did it. How did they get end-to-end -end visibility, and how did they do it with Splunk Cloud and AWS? So uh, Arup, you want to take it away? All right. Thanks so much, David. So my name is Arup Chakrabarty. I'm the Director of Engineering here at PagerDuty. Uh, part of my area covers security, and I'm going to go a little bit deeper into how we achieved end-to-end -end visibility with Splunk Cloud and AWS. Uh, before I get into uh, the details, I want to quickly cover PagerDuty uh, at a high level. So our company was founded in 2009, and we're a cloud-based incident resolution service. And one of the unique things about PagerDuty is that we were, we we're a fully cloud-native company and that we started on AWS, and uh, we've never known what a physical data center looks like because we've been able to leverage AWS since our founding. Uh, we're based out of San Francisco with offices in Seattle, Toronto, as well as the UK and Australia now. Uh, we have over 200,000 end users using the PagerDuty product. We have over 9,000 customers, and we have uh, about half the Fortune 100 using PagerDuty already. 
We're an advanced technology partner of AWS. We process millions of incidents a day. And probably most importantly to a lot of folks on the call, we, we have over 200 native integrations. So uh, whatever you're already using um, for, for your stack, PagerD will integrate with it. So <clears throat> from a security challenge, we had to take a more elastic security stance to investigate and respond quickly in order to solve a couple of problems. The first, of course, is to monitor and triage threats. As you can imagine, in any sort of dynamic elastic environment, you want to make sure that you have good visibility and good telemetry into all the different uh, areas and, and systems and services in your stack. We had to maintain certain security postures, so we have internal policies and compliances that we're trying to meet. Uh, we're trying to mitigate risk, trying to make sure that as we are making changes to our environment that we're not inadvertently increasing risk and, and potentially exposing our business to increased risk. And as you can imagine, PagerDuty is also required to be highly available. So a big component for us for, in deciding to use Splunk was ensuring an optimal customer experience and minimizing service interruption and really trying to improve and further our seller availability track record. And lastly, we're trying to meet our operational analysis needs as well. Uh, one of the, the really nice things about the way that we've been able to use Splunk is not only are we able to use it from that kind of real-time operational monitor and triage threats analysis, but we can also use it over longer time ranges to get better insight into where our problems are. The, the solution that we had previously in place, we were able to get data out of that out of that solution, but unfortunately we weren't able to get answers. And the, the difference to me is that you know we could ask questions to Splunk that we were not able to get answers to from our previous solution. And most importantly, it couldn't scale to meet our growing business needs. So as we were throwing more and more data at, at our existing solution, uh, it simply wasn't scaling. The queries were taking, uh, that used to take minutes, are now taking tens of minutes, and so we started to look at Splunk. So why did we end up going at Splunk? The, the first was really around just speed, and in, in particularly around how we were able to very quickly respond and resolve internal incidents and figure out what the problem was. Now, part of that is because of the just raw search speed that Splunk offers, and another part of that is also just with the Splunk performance in general. We were able to provide a lot of our engineers and, and other folks across our business with rich contextual inf information for informed decision making. So instead of having to wait and parse the data even further via, by downloading it, we were able to make those decisions right, right in the Splunk console. We were able to mitigate risk by reducing the time that it took to find out about issues and, and resolve them. We were able to provide high availability of all of our services because now we had all of our engineering teams using Splunk to to troubleshoot and diagnose their services. As our customer base scaled, we were also able to meet their demands as well. And while this wasn't the primary driver, we were also able to reduce costs by 30% over the previous solution that we were using. So from, a, from an enterprise-wide visibility and HA standpoint, from a security, for my security team, we were able to ensure product security, fast time to investigate and react to issues, and minimize risk and make sure that we are reducing downtime. Again, because all of our engineers are using the service to figure out if their, their service within PagerDuty is having a problem, uh, they, can, they can use Splunk to find out about that uh, ASAP. From a compliance standpoint, we're able to make asserts against our infrastructure and make sure that the policies and the rules and automation that we have are behaving accurately. Uh, one example is uh, we have a policy of least privilege where engineers if, are, are are enabled to access the services that they are responsible for, but that's it. And so we actually have uh, have compliance searches in Splunk validating that, making sure that as we, as engineers, are accessing services that say they're not supposed to be, we actually have visibility into that and can quickly respond to that. From an operational standpoint, for us, we're trying to build one of the most highly available services worldwide, and shaving tens of minutes off of our response times is incredibly important. In fact, we had searches in Splunk that went from tens of minutes to tens of seconds that drastically reduces our time to resolution. And something that I'm very passionate about is it really enabled PagerDuty to take on uh, what I would consider a fantastic DevOps or distributed operations model uh, for the way that we treat operations internally at the company. Um, we get real-time visibility into our production environments, and as you can imagine, uh, PagerDuty, you know, we, we 
we drink our own champagne and use our own products. So each of our engineering teams, they're on call for their own services. And Splunk makes that a lot easier for each of our engineering teams because they're able to go in, they're able to manage the availability and the reliability of their own services, completely self-service. There's no centralized uh, operations team or NOCs that we're leveraging here. Uh, we're using Splunk to take care of a lot of that work for us. So digging a little bit deeper into security and compliance, the, our previous solution provided data but, but not answers. We were able to get a lot of raw output, but then to actually make a decision based on that was still quite challenging. After we bought Splunk, it made our security program just more effective and quite frankly easier to run because we were able to use a product that was faster and just scaling with our needs with the amount of data that we were starting to throw at it. We were able to start setting up threshold-based alerting, so when there it was things like alert fatigue or if there was an alert that's going off too often, we're rapidly able to tune those alerts and make them smarter over time so we're not getting paged for the false, same false alert over and over again. In addition, we also set up dashboards to quickly pinpoint anomalies and figure out when we had to investigate further. Uh, this is one of my favorite features in Splunk where uh, our engineering teams readily just create dashboards and when there are questions of, hey, what went wrong here, people know exactly where to go to because dashboards are assembled already for them and with all that rich contextual information. We also were able to deprecate some of our uh, existing tooling that we had in-house. We had some uh, internal uh, systems that were built for more in elastic environments. So in our cloud native elastic environment, those tools simply weren't working anymore. And Splunk was actually able to replace some of those tools. And so even tools that initially, that was not our goal to use Splunk to replace them, we realized that Splunk is, is doing a better job of some of these dedicated inelastic tools. And we were able to take advantage of centralizing all of our data into Splunk via that. And lastly, we also use the AWS app to manage a lot of the audit trails for compliance in our AWS services. So as engineers are going in and creating their own resources, setting up their own S3 buckets, permissions, what have you, we have strong visibility into that because we're pumping all of our CloudTrail data from AWS into Splunk and we can write searches against that. So in terms of going back to distributed operations or you know some folks will call it DevOps, for us, we were able to deliver new products securely with speed and agility. And we were able to do this by really managing the risk via Splunk and using Splunk to help us figure out, you know, when, when are we taking on un unnecessary risk or when are we exposing ourselves to problems when we're releasing rapidly. We were able to look at historical trends and help teams decide where they want to invest their energy so they could see over time in the last 90 days where the problems are coming from repeatedly so they can make better decisions for their upcoming uh, workload, where they want to dedicate their time to reduce the problems. And most importantly, and this is where you know my higher ups love it, we got to keep our engineers focused more on more on our business and customer satisfaction and delighting our customers versus tools maintenance. Um, I, I, I joke about this all the time, but I'm very happy when I get to uh, have a pay a vendor money such that I don't have to worry about the problem and Splunk takes care of that very well for us. So looking a little bit beyond where we're looking to take our Splunk usage, the, the first is really starting to look at wh what other parts of our business can start leveraging Splunk to make decisions as well. And the first is looking at having our finance team use Splunk to have a little bit more visibility into customer usage trends. So as an example, you know, we'd love to have the leading indicators trying to figure out uh, customer renewals and at-risk accounts? Are there, is there something we need to be doing to dive deeper into that so we can get ahead of these problems before they actually uh, affect our finance team? In addition to that, we're also having our executive team and our product managers using Splunk for overall business health information as well. So as our engineers are setting up these dashboards and showing, hey, here's where our problems are, other teams can actually use that as well to figure out what's going on and, and what the health of the overall business is. So why did we end up end up picking Splunk on AWS? Well, like I said earlier, it's it's a lot easier where when I get to just swipe a credit card and let a vendor of ours deal with the problem that I don't have to focus on. We don't have to worry about any infrastructure management or administrative work. We all we have to worry about is making sure that our logs are pointed to Splunk Cloud and and that's it. Uh, we get the trust and reliability that Splunk provides that you quite frankly don't get with other solutions. In fact, uh, Splunk has a fantastic availability record and that's something that we've been very appreciative of as we've been throwing just more and more data at Splunk and, and the product. And like I said earlier, uh, PagerD is a completely 
cloud native company and we can't live without scalability and, and agility. So as our services are scaling up and down and as we're adding new product functionality, we need vendors and services that can scale with us there. So to recap, PagerDuty, we deployed Splunk Cloud as, a, as our platform for operational visibility and triage across our entire business from more of that day-to-day -day operational monitoring to also security and compliance work as well. Across our engineering teams, we now had a solution for quickly monitoring and alerting on problems and digging into the source of issues and a, we were able to resolve them much faster. We ensured high availability services for our customers to be delighted with PagerDuty. We reduced the amount of time that it took for uh, any of our operational incidents or security incidents uh, from hours to minutes and seconds. And like I said earlier, this wasn't the primary driver, but it definitely was a nice to have and made it a lot easier to solve to my finance team. Uh, we realized a 30% cost savings over the prior service. And that, that was something that uh, made it a lot easier to make sure that I uh, got the approvals on my end to, in order to adopt Splunk internally. So with that, I will hand over to, uh, to the Splunk team. Thanks, Arup. I love that you're getting so much value from Splunk to address both your security needs and the needs of your growing business to help you guys to continue to innovate and keep your customers happy and productive. It's a great story. All right, so Rup gave you a flavor of what they are doing with Splunk, but let me cover a bit more about why Splunk can be important for those of you getting started on your cloud journey or looking for better ways to secure in the cloud. You'll recall that David said AWS secures the cloud and you are responsible for what's on or in the cloud. Splunk helps you to see what's in the cloud with an analytics-driven security approach to help you secure and protect what's valuable to you and your business. How do we do that? Splunk makes your data visible, accessible, and valuable. Splunk is the platform for machine data, so we collect all of your data in one place so you can search, analyze, visualize, and report on it to solve a breadth of use cases for IT, security, and the business. You can collect data from anywhere. Splunk employs universal forwarding and indexing technology to help you collect the data, and it's a small footprint with little or no impact on your systems. There's the ability to search and analyze across all of your data with powerful search and schema on the fly technology. This means you don't have to deploy a database or worry about pulling a predetermined schema together. Again, there's less impact on your IT resources. And then finally, we can rapidly deliver real-time insights from machine data to IT and security personnel through powerful UI and dashboards. So drilling in a bit more, the flexible interface allows you to do free-form search to investigate incidents. Information can be correlated from across your entire environment, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, so you can conduct investigations from a single pane of glass. And you can correlate based on timestamp, user ID, IP address, practically anything to get a full view of what is or was happening in your app or infrastructure. Once you find and remediate an incident, you can set up alerts, smart, threshold-based alerts to minimize alert fatigue and focus your analysts' investigations on the incidents and assets most important for your business. So for example, would you rather have your analysts spending time updating antivirus or investigating unusual access to customer databases? Probably the latter, and that's where Splunk can help. Earlier, Arup said his previous solution gave him data, but that Splunk gives him answers. And this is an example of that, to help you have the context that you need to prioritize your investigations. And let's not forget that you can build dashboards that you need to understand trends, highlight anomalous activity at a glance, or provide compliance, audit, or other reporting to your leadership, board, partners, or other stakeholders. And you can apply these activities and workflows across any number of security use cases. Splunk is a security intelligence platform and can address threat detection and response, malware, phishing, ransomware, fraud, insert other security buzzword, just kidding, are you paying attention? Insider threat or many other use cases. If you have or want a SIM, Splunk is more flexible than your traditional SIM and can complement or replace existing SIM deployments while addressing more complex security use cases. So let's talk about how Splunk can address some security concerns particularly related to AWS. Again, David said AWS secures the cloud and you are responsible for securing what's in the cloud, and this is where Splunk can help. You choose the best of breed providers for threat intelligence, identity and access management, network security, authentication, and odds are Splunk already has an app or partnership with those solutions to help you get data into Splunk and provide prepackaged searches, alerts, dashboards, and reports 
to help you get immediate value from that data source. This week at Black Hat, we announced support for Cyber Foresight, a new threat intelligence feed from Booz Allen Hamilton, and Shadowplex R, a new deception-based ransomware solution. So over the next several months, we'll continue to package up use case-based apps as well. We've just released Splunk Insights for ransomware, and there's more to come. And these are all available for free on Splunk Base. So now that you've got visibility into everything that's on the cloud with Splunk, you've also got access to data from the Splunk app for AWS. With the Splunk app for AWS, you'll gain visibility across usage, topology, security, timeline, billing, and other insights. Some of the security-related use cases we can address include a view into user activity, full audit trail, and the ability to detect anomalous behavior. We get user, VPC, authentication, and other security-relevant data from AWS, so you can get a sense of your full security posture. We capture changes, adds, and deletes to inventory and config to automatically create a topology view and then continuously monitor the changes in a customer's environment for security and compliance reporting. For network security, we capture VPC flow log data, and that flow data provides that additional context and richness that you need for the security lens. And again, if you have some services on-premises, Splunk gives you the complete visibility across cloud and on-prem environments, so you have a true sense of your security posture and the ability to conduct comprehensive investigations and analysis. Customers like Aroop at PagerDuty, Anonoc, Adobe, Yelp, Cox Automotive, FINRA, Autodesk, and more use Splunk to address these needs every day. And now we come to the eye candy portion of our discussion. I mentioned that Splunk looks at your inventory and configuration data to create a topology view. And here it is. It's the big picture of all of your EC2 assets across all of your accounts and regions and provides a picture of how everything is connected. This is a helpful way to visualize where your assets are and how they are connected to each other so, for example, if there are systems that are not attached to a VPC, you may have yourself a violation of corporate policy and you'll want to flag it. You can also drill down by using the legend on the left to turn on or off objects such as security groups, like what ports and protocols are open for what systems, or for EBS volumes and more. This is a great view for overall compliance and security posture. The topology view also has a few layers you can activate or deactivate, so you can easily see which instances have the most network traffic are using the most CPU, have the highest cost, and more. We also support details around Amazon Inspector, and on that point, I'd like to thank Splunk and AWS co-innovate in delivering value to our customers in that we released support for Inspector the same day AWS released the feature. But why does this matter for you in the security context? We well, can expect certain VPCs to have certain levels of traffic, and via Inspector and this view, you can find anomalous patterns to further investigate. As an example, if we drill into an EC2 instance, we get details such as its CPU usage, disk usage, but also information on the AWS inspector results, and even VPC flow details, which we can then drill into. Again, this matters because on an individual basis, I can see where I might need to update patches or what activity might be suspicious. And because Splunk is great at time series data, I can also use this topology view to identify config creep. It wouldn't be a Splunk presentation if we didn't show a dashboard. And here we see two VPC flow log views. We've got VPC flow logs for security analysis and VPC flow logs for traffic analysis. So if we look briefly at the security analysis view, you have your standard accept versus reject trends over time, as well as the top values of rejections by ports and addresses. These are a starting point to look through potential anomalies or unexpected results, such as a very high ratio of rejections to accepts or an uncommon port. And in Splunk, you can use statistical commands to understand, for instance, if something is four times the standard deviation of normal, you can trigger an alert based on something that is highly anomalous and aligns to what these statistical commands are figuring out. This is an example of how analytics-driven security can help you prioritize your security investigations. But back to this dashboard. You can click on any row in the results to drill down into the trend lines here at the bottom. So these are just a few of the practical applications of Splunk to help you secure what's in the cloud. So now you've seen all the goodness of Splunk and you don't have to just listen to me or buy into the eye candy. Splunk's value is proven. Splunk has been recognized as a leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for the last four years. And we've got thousands of global customers using Splunk for security and compliance. Um, at least 7,000 just for security and compliance, and over 14,000 folks using Splunk for broader use cases. 
Customers cover all sizes and verticals, um, including SMBs, and again, are all over the world. And then finally, as Arup alluded to, you can use Splunk beyond just security for a whole range of use cases across application management, IT operations, business analytics, powering DevOps, industrial data collection, and more. So what next? You're sold on the value. You can't wait to replicate what Arup's doing. And so there's a free online experience where you can check out Splunk for yourself. It's an AWS instance that's preloaded with data, and there's videos and uh, documentation that can walk you through incident detection and scoping exercises. Or, if you're already convinced, you can go ahead and buy now Splunk Cloud on AWS Marketplace. You can load up your own data, and then you'll get a better sense of your own security posture right away. If you have more questions, you can see Splunk, PagerDuty, and AWS at the upcoming, well, today is the Chicago Summit, and today is also Black Hat. Um, and then we've got the New York Summit coming up soon, reInvent.conf, which is Splunk's users conference event, and PagerDuty's users conference event coming up as well. So stop by and see us, and back over to you, David, to bring us home. Thanks for that, Aaron. Uh, and um, definitely um, uh, some interesting stuff there. Uh, I did want to give a little plug for Marketplace. Um, so uh, the AWS Marketplace is where you can find many of the, the software products you already know and love, uh, and it gives you the ability to uh, purchase those right through the Marketplace and start using them um, immediately in your own account. And um, you also get the benefit of uh, just having that appear on your AWS bill, which um, for some folks that's that's a, a nice advantage to be able to do that. Um, so definitely uh, uh, take a look at Marketplace uh, and um, use that as an opportunity to get started with Splunk. So a couple of recommendations that when you're looking for solutions in general, and specifically um, if you're looking for a, a, a solution like Splunk to give you end-to-end -end visibility. Recommendation number one, um, you want it to be seamless. Um, so, you know, something like Splunk is going to um, uh, take almost anything you throw at it, and it's, it's going to be able to parse that data. And it it's really does fit seamlessly within your cloud solution. Um, or, frankly, you know, if you're still in um, some sort of hybrid mode, uh, Splunk's going to fit right into that too. Um, and when you look at partners, take a look at their expertise uh, uh, in AWS, in, on, and around, uh, because you know our, our CTO, our beloved CTO Werner, uh, often says there's no compression algorithm for experience, right? And Splunk has a lot of experience um, on AWS. They've been working with us for years um, to refine their solution. And the key to success, uh, and, and I can't stress this enough, uh, is really kind of twofold. Uh, one, can you see everything, right? Do you have that end-to-end -end visibility on what's going on in your systems? And, you know, that's everything from server logs to, you know, VPC flow logs to what's going on in your AWS account. But you need to take action on those. You know, it, it's not enough to just collect data. Um, it's important to have a tool that allows you to take action to uh, remediate um, improve or manage your systems. And um, I'm a big fan of Splunk. Uh, I know that um, uh, this solution um, really kills it on both ends of this recommendation. Um, so definitely um, take a look at that um, when you're looking at vendors. And what I'd like to do now um, is we're going to spend a little bit of time um, answering Q&A. Uh, we'll also um, uh, bring some questions in from uh, the folks listening today, um, and then I have a couple of questions of my own. So, um, Arup, uh, Aaron, um, you guys are on the the firing line today. Um, so, one question that I had from from the audience, um, PK, uh, asked about um, what is the preferred way to authenticate AWS users to Splunk, um, and they're they're using G Suite, but um, this really um, uh, uh, applies to just about everybody. So, when you're when you're looking to um, configure Splunk Cloud, uh, Splunk Cloud actually supports SAML for SSO. Um, and right now, um, you can use uh, Ping Identity, um, Okta, um, uh, ADFS, or the the AD that's built into uh, um, Azure to be able to do this. So you have those options for SSO. Um, you can also create separate Splunk accounts for people to log in um, to manage it. So it's it's really your call, um, but Splunk provides 
um, a lot of flexibility. Um, I had a question also from the crowd, um, uh, and this one's for Arup, um, and feel free to not answer this if you don't want to, um, but Tim asks, you know, was PagerDuty's prior solution a commercial product or was it something homegrown? Uh, that's a good, that's a great question. Uh, it was a commercial product uh, that we were using and uh, this was, we made the switch back in uh, 2015, so about two, two years ago now, uh, off that commercial product. Okay, great. Um, and then uh, another question that that came up is um, why Splunk Cloud? Um, you know, uh, and and how did you find it? And did you look at standing up your own Splunk servers in the cloud? Uh, that's a great question. So we actually did look at standing up our own Splunk servers in the cloud, but then when we did a a, a, t a total cost of operation analysis, uh, we realized that just the the amount of engineering effort that that uh, on-premise Splunk uh, within AWS would have required would not have made it worth it. So that's where the economics of Splunk Cloud started to make more and more sense. The uh, the other piece, you know, we did look at a couple other vendors in terms of in terms of capabilities and everything. But uh, I'll be frank, you know, Splunk's been around as the market leader for a long time now, and I've used Splunk in in previous jobs, as had many of our engineers at PagerDuty. So. Uh, once we had a chance to kind of battle test this Splunk Cloud product and realized that this is what could fit the bill for our lasting environment, uh, it basically became a no-brainer for us. Yeah, I feel you. I, I, I came into uh, my old job having used Splunk and loved it for, for a, a long time. And what's cool is that um, they sure don't rest on their laurels either. Uh, I see Splunk innovating like crazy. Um, so a uh, question for Aaron. Um, uh, you know, we talk about marketplace as a way to purchase Splunk, but um, uh, certainly that's not the only way that someone can acquire Splunk. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. So there's standard pricing on um, marketplace up to 20 gigs, but if you find that you need something beyond that, um, then you can engage with uh, either the marketplace sellers or or with Splunk sellers as well. Um, and if you come through, obviously, if you're interested after this webinar today, then you can. Uh, reach out to sales at Splunk.com and, and we'll help you follow up. So the, the, you guys are happy to help people buy stuff. That's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, one other question I had for Arup, uh, we asked about you know what you replaced, but like, what's your indexing level? Like, How much data are you guys indexing per day? Uh, that's a great question. So we went from, when we first started using Splunk, it was around two to 300 gigabytes a day. And now we're indexing somewhere between six to seven hundred um, gigabytes per day, so about a three three and a half x growth of, over two years. And are you guys finding that uh, you find new use cases for it, or is this just um, a kind of organic growth of what you're logging um, based on what you did before? Uh, this is organic growth and and expanded use cases for us. Okay, great, awesome. I had a question for Aaron. Um, you know, one of the things that people ask me about a lot with Splunk is um, they hear about a hundred percent uptime guarantee. Um, is that for real? Uh, and uh, uh, maybe you can kind of um, tell us a little bit about that. Sure thing. So we use Splunk to ensure uptime, and it's for real. We monitor. It's something we take great pride in. It was something that uh, our our CEO wanted to sort of stick a reputation on, and and so it's for real. Awesome. That's, uh, that's very impressive. Um, so question for Arup um, from the audience. Uh, Albert asks, uh, how much time did you spend, or how much time do you spend uh, around customization of Splunk versus you know, kind of what comes out of the box? So for us, you know, we, we, had some, we had configuration management in place for our existing uh, AWS footprint. And so in terms of getting the Splunk agent and everything set up, we probably spent you know, a couple of engineering weeks getting that ramped up. But after that, the amount of configuration has been very minimal. Um, we probably filed maybe one or two tickets a quarter uh, with the Splunk Cloud support team, but it's it's very minimal, the ongoing support. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, and uh, uh, Aaron, um, uh, you mentioned uh, one uh, pane of glass. Uh, I, I like to joke and call it one glass of pain. Uh, but uh, Jeff asks, uh, he actually had a couple of questions, and it sounds like he has um, uh, Splunk on-premises, and he's curious, you know, does the license transfer, 
Um, and uh, is it something that he can do in kind of a hybrid mode with his on-premises resources? Do you want to talk about that a little? Sure thing. I don't know that you can transfer your license per se, but you can certainly, we have plenty of customers that are doing hybrid models where they're leveraging what they've got on-prem, um, and we also often help them migrate to the cloud, so if there are certain pieces that they want to start migrating to the cloud, we can certainly work with folks on how we transfer or allocate portions of their existing license to move into the cloud. Um, but as you may imagine, the pricing is slightly different for an on-prem or a term license than it is for cloud, um, just because it's a, a slightly different being a hosted model. Um, but you'll want to talk to your Splunk sales rep to, you know, sort of get the, the best program going for you and your needs. Okay, yeah, so talk to your rep um, and uh, uh, tell them Aaron sent you. Um, and that'll probably help. Uh, and then about the hybrid piece, like say that I, I, I want to use Splunk Cloud and um, I have like part of my environment is on premises, part of it's in AWS. Um, uh, is that complicated? Um, can I see everything? How, how does that work, Aaron? Sure, again, it's, it, it's all data sources essentially, right? But you can divvy it up as you know, if you've got certain pieces that you, for example, for security reasons, if you only want certain people to see certain data, then you can divide things up that way so people have certain views or only have access to certain data. Um, you can do role-based access into, into what you want people to see. But essentially, it's all, it's all we view it all as data sources and, and coming into Splunk. And so then you can divvy it up and you can see everything if you want, if you've got the right access, or you can give people the, the role-based views that are appropriate for what they need to be accessing. Cool, awesome. And um, another question for you, Aaron, uh, and we're kind of uh, beating you up today. Um, I, I, I had somebody ask about Splunk Light. Like, what is that um, and what should we know? Got it. So Splunk Light is, um, is more gated by users. So there are five users max for Splunk Lite. Um, and so it's just up to 20 gigs a day. So it, and it's missing some of the features of Splunk Enterprise or Splunk Cloud. So Splunk Lite is really geared for smaller organizations that are just sort of getting started with Splunk. It's available as an AMI on Marketplace. Um, you can bring your own license to the cloud if you'd like, um, or you can have it for on-prem. Awesome. And, you know, I always think of uh, Splunk Lite as, you know, really for um, the smaller companies that are looking to get started. Right. Um, and then you can kind of grow into other versions um, as, as your business increases. Yep. Um, and I will say one other thing that Splunk Lite is already bundled with the app for AWS. So, um, so you, it's easy to get your AWS data uh, into Splunk Lite. Okay, great. One question, and I'll answer this. Um, can Splunk be configured on RDS to decipher those logs? Um, they sure can. Uh, and when we released uh, enhanced logging for um, RDS, uh, Splunk was right there with us from the beginning. So they were a launch partner on that additional functionality. Um, uh, it, it's really hard to find something that um, Splunk can accept. Uh, you know, it's everything from uh, data from e-cars to you know your 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 Palo Alto networks devices to your cloud infrastructure to your your systems and services uh, it's it's really hard to stump Splunk so thanks for that question um, so uh, one question here and and I'll talk to this too Glad is asking you know what are some of the skill sets required for um, developing on Splunk. Um, so there's actually um, uh, some tools if you want to create a Splunk app, um, and a Splunk app is essentially something that sits on top of Splunk and provides uh, additional functionality. And that can be as simple as a customized dashboard, um, and as complicated as the the you know some of the apps that Splunk themselves develops. Uh, take a look at Splunk Base, and um, that should give you. Uh, some insight into the possibilities as well as the kind of methods to get there. Go One ahead. other thing on that point, there's also um, dev.splunk.com and there's there's some pretty extensive um, API documentation and the like um, for folks who want to to build an app uh, on top of Splunk. Okay, um, so here's one for you, Aaron, um, and this one's a little bit of a curveball. Um, does Splunk sign BAAs with US-based customers that need to index protected health information? I'm not actually sure on that one. Um, I know that we, you know, again, you can talk to your Splunk rep 
to find out. We do have some HIPAA apps on Splunk base um, and different customers do comply with HIPAA data, but, but generally talk to your Splunk rep and, and we'll find out more. Okay, great. A question um, for um, Arup and um, possibly Aaron as well. Um, you know, we, we kind of touched on this, that, that Splunk can actually help you control your costs. Um, uh, but, you know, a question for Roop is, um, are you using that, that costing functionality? And a question for Aaron is, um, do you know of any customers that, that really use that to help manage their, their cloud costs? Sure, so I can take the, the first bit. So the answer is yes, we actually do have uh, some of the AWS detailed billing information uh, uh, being piped into Splunk. Um, the benefit that we've gotten there is just kind of that real-time visibility into where our spend is going on our AWS bill. So uh, in our environment, we, we believe that you know, engineers should have full self-service capability, so there's no approval process or anything for engineers to go in and, say, spin up a bunch of new i3 instances. Uh, that said, you know, we do have alert set up that if our bill goes over a certain amount too quickly, uh, I actually get alerted by a page duty for that. So that's where uh, I need, that's where I get to stay on top of that and have visibility and get to follow up with that engineer. And sometimes it's a matter of they forgot to spin it down or they're spinning up a new service. We whitelist it and no harm, no foul. So I'll hand over to Aaron for the next question. Sure. So there's in, as part of the Splunk app for AWS, there are billing dashboards. Um, and, and aside from, I think Arup gave a pretty concise and good answer on what they're doing, um, so better for him to sort of speak to it, but um, FINRA and Family Search uh, are both customers who've also talked about how they're using Splunk to manage their billing. Um, FINRA does a lot of billing analysis um, and they manage their, you know, security using Splunk and they've actually published a webinar that's available on YouTube uh, that they did with the AWS billing team about how they're managing their, uh, their spend. Via, with AWS via Splunk. Yeah, and for people that don't know, um, FINRA is actually the government agency that um, uh, regulates the, um, the U.S. financial markets. Um, so if I remember correctly, um, the last time I checked in, they were indexing about 3 billion um, events a day. Like, obviously, there's a lot going on um, in any given day in a uh, uh, financial market. Um, uh, and Family Search is... Um, uh, if you've ever like kind of tried to track down your ancestors, um, uh, that that's one of the tools that you might use to do that. So as you can expect, they have a ton of data. Um, so two really interesting companies um, that that there's information out there. I would check that out. So this is a question probably primarily for Aaron, but um, uh, Arup, feel free to pipe in. Um, and, and Andrew asks, um, you know, many companies already have Seam solutions in place, right? You know, they have an existing tool. Um, and, and he's curious, how do you go about showing Splunk's value prop and why it would be worth it? And I, I thought I heard somebody mention TCOA. Um, do you guys want to talk about that a little bit, uh, Aaron? Sure. Um, so I'll just make some assumptions on what you're asking. So if you already have a SIM in place and you're wondering why you would also need Splunk, um, with a lot of SIMs, there's some data reduction that happens and you sort of get a sense of what's, what's, what's red and green in your environment and, and a sense of what you need to report on from a compliance perspective. But to do any proactive threat hunting or even in some cases to do some comprehensive incident investigation, you don't necessarily have all of the data that you need to get to the answers that you need or to get to sort of the, the best decision, enable your analysts with the best decisions that they can make to really fully scope and, and proactively address any issues that are happening. Um, so that's where Splunk's good, again, because we can bring in any data from any data source um, that you get the complete picture. And then we've also uh, launched what's called our adaptive response framework. And so what this is, is it's a, it's, it's a framework that we use to plug in with all the various vendors that I um, sort of showcased on one of the earlier slides. And so we can send data back and forth. There's bi-directional communication. So for example, from Palo Alto Networks, we can gather threat intelligence from them and, and see what's happening on some of the endpoints. Correlate that with your threat intelligence, other threat intelligence feeds that you may be receiving through Splunk Enterprise Security. And then you can feed that back out to the firewalls to adjust policy or block endpoints or uh, block ports and the like. Um, so that's kind of one example. There's the, the, and that's really where we see the future going is around adaptive response and, and really helping folks to automate and orchestrate since 
you know, we we see that skills there are skill set shortages that we talk about all the time, and um, and there's just such as threats evolve. We need to be able to rapidly respond and make the best decisions we can with the most amount of information. And so that's that's where Splunk is great. We've got that flexibility and those partnerships across the ecosystem that we can just sort of act as the central nervous system to help you make the best decisions and respond as quickly as possible. And where you're comfortable orchestrating, then we can help you orchestrate as well. Did that answer the question? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was awesome. Uh, Roop, uh, I, I think it was you that mentioned TCOA. Like, how did you go through that analysis to um, bring Splunk in? Yeah, so th this is an analysis we do anytime we, we start using a new vendor. We look at, you know, how much engineering effort would we would we need in order to maintain a solution in addition to, of course, like hardware costs and, and things like that. And where a lot of companies uh, forget to, to look at it, they, they forget about the opportunity costs where, you know, yes, you have your engineers, say, working on maintaining an existing solution, but could those engineers be working on something else that, that would delight your customers instead? And so that's something where I always leverage my finance team to kind of help me make those decisions and help assemble that data. Uh, so that was one bit of it in trying to assemble that total cost of ownership. The other bit for us from a, from a pure um, cost benefit was, was speed. And so as I talked about earlier, uh, a lot of the searches that we had in, uh, in our existing solution were taking tens of minutes, and with Splunk, they were taking seconds or, or single digit minutes. And uh, just like the value proposition with PagerDuty, uh, for us at least, we were trying to minimize the amount of customer impact that happens as a result of, of any incident. And so when I'm able to go to my finance team and show them, hey, you know, we're going to reduce the time to resolution from X to Y, and here's how much that's going to save us, uh, that also factors into the, the, the cost-benefit analysis that we, that we did. Awesome, cool. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of math, so um, uh, that's really <laughs> I can, helpful. I could add one other piece to that too, David. Sorry, I'd forgotten about the second part of the question, but there are tools that we on the Splunk side can help you with. So if you're, you know, sort of to what Arub said, there's that opportunity cost, and then there's, you know, just your your manpower cost that we can, you know, you can be redeploying folks to do other things, um, and then just the speed of innovation that Splunk delivers is is something that folks might be you know challenged to deliver obviously it's better for a group to tell you but we also have lots of ROI spreadsheets and calculations that your sales rep can walk through with you if if that's something that you need to you know prove to your management or leadership awesome thank you for that um, uh, and and thank you so much um, to everybody that submitted questions um, I think I got to them all. If not, um, you know, feel free to reach out to the Splunk folks. Um, I, and I wanted to do um, a quick plug. Uh, so anybody that's in Chicago, um, the AWS Summit is going on um, right now, today and tomorrow. Uh, you can you can visit and talk with the Splunk folks there. Um, it's a free event, uh, lots of uh, educational opportunities, um, breakout sessions, boot camps, labs, uh, we're going to do AWS Game Day there. Uh, we also have an AWS Summit coming up in New York. Uh, that's going to be August 14th, um, uh, and that's at the the Javits Center. Definitely come visit us there as well. Uh, and you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't give one more plug for uh, .conf, um, which is Splunk's um, annual user conference. It's always a lot of fun, a lot of enthusiasm, and a ton of information. Uh, that's in D.C. this year, uh, September 25th through the 28th. Um, so, again, breakout sessions, learning opportunities, labs, and, um, you know, plenty of fun and enthusiasm. I, I've been a couple of times. Uh, it's a blast. Um, definitely check it out. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for um, joining us today. Uh, I, we really do appreciate it and hope you learned something. Um, I certainly did. Uh, and, you know, I mentioned you can get access to the slides. Um, please do fill out the satisfaction survey over after the webinar. Your survey results are really important to us. So we actually look at it and we use that to improve. So, you know, if there's something uh, that you loved, um, let us know. Uh, something that was awesome, let us know. Uh, if you have feedback that's a little more constructive, uh, please let us know as well. And thank you for attending and have a great rest of your day.